I had a sound problem with uh, Jacob's Trouble Part 3, so I'm going to have to make this a Part 4. All right, let's go to Acts Chapter 9. That's where we started. And Saul, this is the conversion of Saul, where he became the Apostle Paul. And a lot of people tell you that he's a false apostle, but I say they're liars. And he'll call him a liar in the kingdom, but that's all right. Verse 1, Acts 9, verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples unto, of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came unto Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. He didn't say, I am Yeshua. He said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for me to kick against the pricks. And he stumbled, and he trembling, I'm sorry, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. He was blind, struck with blindness. That's what Judaism is, blindness. Did you hear me? That's what Judaism is, blindness. Verse 10, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. You see, when you're in Judaism, and you want to be, see, have sight of the Lord, you better come to a Christian and have a hand, uh, his hand laid on you. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. The chief priests, not Roman Catholic priests. These are Jewish priests. Okay? And, and it's... Now, where do they get the authority to do this? I mean, you know, the Romans are in charge. Verse 15, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Hmm. When's the last time you ever heard that preached on TBN? For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately, and immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them, which called on this name in Jerusalem, and came thither hither for this 
for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? And Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their lying await was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night, let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly. He had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus and how he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. Which, when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. And it came to pass as Peter passed Throughout all quarters he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydia. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole, arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt at Lydia and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. Now there was a Joppa, a certain disciple, named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom, when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And forasmuch as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them, when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and sewing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. Peter rose, had somebody rise from the dead by the power of God. Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one, Simon, a tanner. All right, let's go back. Acts twenty six twenty one. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Does that sound like the Romans? No. Acts 23, 12. And when it was day, certain of the Jews, obviously not all of them, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Uh, chapter 5, Jesus is speaking, and uh, he has everybody, you know, sitting down. So let's take a look. Uh, I guess we're going to start in verse 1. All right, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Are people persecuted for righteousness' sake? Oh, yeah. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Who were the prophets sent to? They were sent to Israel. Isn't that the truth? Ye are the salt of the earth. And I did an entire Bible study on the salt. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt hath lost his savor, or its flavor, right, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of man. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that... I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Would somebody please give the Noahide Jews a memo? Verse 17. Matthew chapter 5. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. A jot and a tittle is uh, basically the dotting of the I's and the crossing of the T's. Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Listen to this. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Next time you hear somebody say Lordship Salvation in one of their videos, saying you don't have to keep any laws, post this in the comment section and remind them let everybody know that it was Jesus who said this. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, what were the scribes? They were the Jewish copyists of the, of the Bible. What were the Pharisees? A denomination of the Jews. And if you look in the Jewish encyclopedia, they will say that modern day Judaism is the modern-day interpretation of Phariseeism unchanged. Pharisees are Jews, modern-day Jews, and their holy book is a book called the Talmud. And Jesus said, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, the modern-day Jews, Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
If your righteousness doesn't exceed that of the, the modern day Jews, you're in trouble, people. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause. See, you can be angry with your brother with a cause. I know, by the way, the modern Bibles delete without a cause. And, and they say, whosoever is angry with his brother, brother shall be in danger of the judgment. Therefore, they turn Jesus into a sinner. Remember when Jesus took overthrew the temple the tables in the temple and grabbed a, a, a whip of cords and beat the people. He was angry with a cause. He said, thou shall not uh, turn my house of, uh, let's see, my, my house shall be a house of prayer, but thou hast turned it into a den of thieves. I'm paraphrasing. So they turned Jesus into a sinner by removing those words, the modern Bibles, not the King James. Verse 22, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thy, thine adversary quickly, lest the, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Thou hast heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And what man has not you know, been guilty of this? I mean, well, maybe there's some males in San Francisco that are not guilty of this, but uh, they lust after other men, right? And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. It hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a bill of writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Again ye have heard that it been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shall perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all. Think about that next time you go into a courtroom. Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, nor for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by the head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Why would Jesus say that? Because there's a thing called Kol Nidre, K-O-L-N-I-D-R-E. It's where the Jews make a promise unto God on the Day of Atonement, saying that any promise that they make is null and void. So when you work for them and they promise to pay you and they don't, they're not. They're not. It's not a sin. After all, I said Kol Nidre. I said everything I promised uh, was going to be null and void. Of none effect. Look it up. K-O-L-N-I-D-R-E. Look it up in the Jewish Encyclopedia. I'm not making this stuff up. That's why Jesus said, but let your communication be yay, yay, nay, nay. If you say yes, 
Make your yes mean yes. And if you say no, make your no mean no. Don't say yes and mean no. That's why he said, if your righteousness doesn't exceed that of the Pharisees, you wouldn't go into heaven. You think Jesus didn't know about the Babylonian Talmud? Of course he did. That's why he said that the um, they didn't know him or the Father. You have, verse 38, you've heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, cheek turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. This is the favorite verse of, lawyer, of lawyers. If somebody's going to sue you and, and they want to take your coat, well, give them your coat and your cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. You know, if he wants you to go a mile with him, go with him too. Give to him that asketh thee. You know, that's that's a tough one. You know, when when you, when you see homeless people ask you for money for food or at probably maybe beer or I don't know. It, it's Jesus says, give to him that asketh thee. And from him that would borrow of thee, turn th not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Ye shall love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, there's a difference between loving our enemies and loving those that are enemies of God and hate God. There's a big difference there. I don't believe we're supposed to love God's enemies. I don't believe we're supposed to love Satan and, and Satanists. You know, King David said in Psalms 139, 21, Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? King David hated those that hated the Lord. And he was a man after God's own heart. In 2 Chronicles chapter 19 and verse 1, you had a good king named Jehoshaphat that was joined himself to help King Ahab of Israel, a wicked, evil king that hated the Lord. So let's read what the, the prophet said. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, the seer is just an Old Testament name for prophet, and Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Good question. Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath, God's anger, therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, and that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. Let me ask you a question. Should Christians help the Israelis and the Jews that hate the Lord Jesus Christ? Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Is Jesus Christ Lord? Is he? Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Christians don't know it. But God's wrath is on them. Verse 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute 
you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For, ye if, for if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. All right, John chapter 15 and verse 20. Jesus speaking. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, and this is Jesus speaking, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. In other words, they're going to take your words and twist them around and turn them against you. In Acts 13, verse 50, But the Jews, but the Jews, not the Romans, but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. I've read this in the other study, 2 Titus 3.12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. In Luke chapter 12, verse 9, we read, Jesus said, But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you to unto the synagogues, who hangs out in the synagogues, but when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers, take no thought how or what, Thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say in other words if they bring you to the synagogue or, or a council and convict you of being a Christian and let me ask you a question is there enough evidence to convict you of being a Christian hmm you know one thing you don't want to do is deny Christ before a council to save your life. Jesus said that he, they would, the Holy Ghost would put, speak words through you. You know, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. Think about it. In Romans 8.35, Paul asks, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? Hmm. And to those that want to fight God the Father who sent his Son, in Jeremiah 17 and verse 18, it says, Let them be confounded that persecute me, but let me not be confounded. Confounded means confused. So let's read that again. Let them be confounded that persecute me, but let me not be confounded. Let them be dismayed, but let me not, uh, but let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. Do you know what double destruction is? When you destroy somebody with the body, that's one destruction. And then didn't Jesus said, fear not them which kill the body, but can't destroy the soul in hell? 
That's what double destruction is. Destroy, destruction of the body and destruction of the soul. In Matthew 10, 28, Jesus said, And fear not them which kill the body, that's one destruction, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That, people, is double destruction. All right, so I, I think the... Um, you get the general idea here of, you know, persecution and trouble and tribulation. I mean, it's pretty obvious who was behind the persecution of the Christians. And if you don't believe it, let me give you one more, a couple more. Jesus said, if you hated him, you hated the Father. So is there another plan of salvation for the unbelieving Jews? Well, Acts 4.12, Paul, Peter said, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that name is not Yeshua. Because I'm telling you people, Rabbi Schneerson they call him Yeshua. John 5, 16, And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Verse 18, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. John 7, 1. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. You see anything here about the Romans? I don't. Now, I told you, the Pharisees were Jews. They were a denomination of Jews. Matter of fact, the Jewish Encyclopedia will even tell you that Modern Judaism is ancient Phariseeism unchanged. Jesus in Matthew 23, 15, Jesus said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. And I got, I got into it with a Seventh-day Adventist. They said that Je Jesus was killed by the Romans. But what does Paul say in 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 14 through 16? Paul writes, you know, Paul, the, the, the Pharisee that became a Christian, that was well-versed in Judaism, and I'll guarantee you he knew all about the Babylonian Talmud. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered, for ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus. Even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Does that sound like God's chosen people? 1 Corinthians 16.22 if any man love not, if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, maranatha. That means cursed. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be cursed. So, should Christians be helping the Israelis that hate Jesus Christ? Um, hey, what can I tell you? 
All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. I hope you learned something about persecution and who it is that's going to be doing the persecution. Why is it going to be any different? The, the people that were being persecuted for being Christians in the beginning was from those that adhere to Judaism. Why is it going to be any different in the end time? Everybody points to the, the Muslims and Mecca and, and everybody points to Rome and, and the Pope. Why is it going to be any different? Matter of fact, if you read an article by the Anti-Deflammation League, a Jewish group, guess what? They brag about the support, the Vatican support of Jews, the Jews. So, it's not going to be any different. Jesus said you'd be taken to the synagogues. I don't see any Catholics in the synagogues. Do you? All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor belong to him and him alone. In Jesus' name, amen.